Hey, Tim here. 50 years ago, you would have been hard pressed to find a child with any form of diabetes. However, since then, the prevalence of diabetes in children has skyrocketed. Specifically, the incidence of childhood type 1 diabetes has increased by an average of 3% per year between 1960 and 1996. And when you include adults, the number of individuals with diabetes has quadrupled between 1980 and 2014 from 108 million to 422 million. This represents an increase of 3.5% of the world's population in a little over 30 years. So, what gives? With so many people affected, have you ever stopped to ask yourself what exactly is diabetes? Luckily, if you have, you found the right video. Let's get to it. Let's start with a brief lesson on insulin. Insulin is a hormone released by your pancreas, and its main role is to shuttle sugar or glucose into your body's cells for use. And when I say cells, what I mean is the basic building blocks of your body. And many cells require glucose in order to function properly, particularly your brain and your red blood cells. These cells receive glucose from carbohydrates in the food that you eat and then convert the glucose into energy. And major sources of carbohydrates in the American diet include bread, pasta, sweets, soda, and fruit. And even if the food doesn't taste sweet, like bread for example, your gut will take those carbohydrates and ultimately convert them into glucose. So let's get back to insulin. Imagine that glucose is a package from Amazon, and you can't get that package delivered to your house without a delivery truck. In this analogy, glucose is the package, insulin is the delivery truck, and your house is a cell within your body. Simply put, diabetes is kind of like there not being enough delivery trucks to deliver your package. But in this case, there's not enough insulin available to deliver the glucose into your cells. Okay, so now that we know that, there are two types of diabetes, type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes refers to the type of diabetes that people are usually born with. Simply put, type 1 diabetes means that your pancreas is producing no insulin. In most cases, the cause of this disease is unknown, but several factors could cause your immune system to attack your pancreas, such as genetics, environmental factors, or even certain infections. Ideally, treatment of type 1 diabetes will include insulin shots to ensure that glucose is taken into the cells, as well as other interventions such as carbohydrate counting or regular exercise. On the other hand, a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes means one of two things. Either your pancreas is making insulin but your cells can't use it, or your pancreas just isn't making enough insulin. Type 2 diabetes is usually caused by consuming too many simple carbohydrates like sugar, which can lead to insulin resistance and ultimately decrease production of insulin in the pancreas. To help you envision how this actually goes down, imagine that your pancreas is a car with your body's cells being the tires and your lead foot representing sugary foods. If you drop the pedal to the metal too suddenly too often, eventually the tires are going to blow out and the car is going to stop running. Similarly, if you regularly consume too much sugar at once, you may eventually develop insulin resistance. This is when your pancreas produces insulin, but your cells can't use it. Imagine this scenario kind of like if your car was running fine, but the tires were flat. Then, without realizing your tires were flat, you decide to keep gunning it until your motor throws a rod and the car dies. This is essentially what happens in type 2 diabetes. If you spend your life consuming sugary foods, your cells become, in a sense, numb to insulin. Your pancreas then tries to compensate by making more insulin until it realizes the cells aren't working correctly. The pancreas then stops making as much insulin, and this is type 2 diabetes. Regardless of the type of diabetes, the damage always comes from having too much glucose in the blood, a condition known as hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia can cause glucose to accumulate in the capillaries of the body, which can make them brittle and also decrease blood flow to certain areas of the body, which is why some people actually have to have their feet amputated. Other issues can include kidney failure, heart disease, retinopathy, which can lead to blindness, and neuropathy, which is a lack of feeling. However, those with diabetes shouldn't freak out just yet. 
because there are numerous ways to prevent these issues from even occurring in the first place. Management of type 2 diabetes usually includes dietary modification, exercise which can improve your cell's ability to use insulin, as well as medications like metformin which increase your cell's insulin sensitivity as well as reduce the amount of glucose released by the liver, and some people may even require insulin. However, what does the current evidence say about dietary and exercise recommendations? Those with diabetes are often advised to monitor intake of carbohydrate. For example, one person may be allowed to have 45 grams of carbohydrate at each meal, with 15 to 20 grams of carbohydrate scattered between two to three snacks throughout the day. This is often done with carbohydrate counting, which is just a way of tracking intake by converting 15 grams of carbohydrate to one serving. Other recommendations are likely to include decreased consumption of simple sugars, along with increased intake of fibrous foods such as vegetables and fruit, while also performing moderate to intense aerobic exercise about 150 minutes every week, and promoting weight loss in those who are overweight or obese, as this may increase insulin sensitivity. While diabetes is a condition that should not be downplayed, those with the disease can prevent complications and live a long, healthy life. Fortunately, medical treatment of this disease is advancing with every passing year. So who knows? Diabetes could be eliminated within our very own lifetimes.